Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and in this video I'm going to show you how to wire up the switches that control the Arduino and the motor shield. This can be a little bit scary, but I'll take it nice and slow so that even a simple-minded software guy like myself can understand this hardware. So let's get started. Before we get started, let's take a minute to consider what we're trying to do here. I have here an image of a 9 volt battery and a light bulb. Now the 9 volt battery produces 9 volts of direct current, whereas the light bulb requires 110 volts of alternating current, so this won't work exactly as I'm going to explain it, but imagine if the light bulb were a light bulb for a like a flashlight. If that were the case, then we ought to be able to take a wire from the negative pole of the battery, which is this side here, and run it to the ground of the light bulb. And we ought to be able to take a wire from the positive pole, you see the plus sign here tells us this is the positive pole of the battery, and run it to this point on the light bulb, and we would see the light turn on. So what we want to do is create the simplest form of a circuit and let's talk about these circuits a little bit here. When we talk about circuits, it's useful to talk in terms of these symbols here, so we don't have to go out and try and find photos that represent the different components. So this symbol here represents a light bulb, and this symbol here represents the battery, and you'll see that the battery has a positive side and a negative side. When we connect the wires, the light bulb goes on as we talked about. And here's the picture that describes the image on the left here. This picture we call a schematic. And what it shows us is the battery. Here's the symbol for the battery and the symbol for the light bulb. And then we've connected these symbols with a line and these lines represent the wires that connect the battery and the light bulb. If we were to break the red wire, we would see that the light bulb goes off and we can represent that by breaking the line on the schematic. And so by connecting these wires or disconnecting these wires we can cause the light to go on and off. We'd like to do that a little bit easier than actually having to rewire the light every time we want the light to go on and off so we'll introduce a switch into the circuit. This is what a switch looks like and here's the symbol for a switch, and it's just a way of connecting two wires together, as we see here in the schematic. So if we connect the, this side of the red wire to the switch, and this part of the red wire to the battery to that side of the switch, then by pushing the switch, we can turn the light on and off. Well, what if we were powering an Arduino instead of a light bulb? So the circuit looks pretty much the same as it did with the light bulb, but now we're going to replace the light bulb with an Arduino. And it works the same way. You'll see on the Arduino that there are two pins, one labeled VN, which is for the positive input from the power source, and the other, which is labeled GND, which is the ground or the negative lead from the power. So we can hook up the Arduino with a 9 volt battery and control it with a switch just like we could with the light bulb. And this is what the circuit would look like with the battery switch and Arduino. Now from here on we'll just talk in terms of schematics. We won't use the images anymore because they're a little bit cumbersome. We could also create a similar kind of circuit for the motor shield. Remember that we don't want to power the Arduino from the same power source as the motor shield because they use different voltages. So the circuit is basically the same for the motor shield as for the Arduino. However, it's a separate circuit from that of the Arduino. Here are a couple images of batteries to help make this really clear. Notice that the 9 volt battery powers the Arduino circuit, whereas the 3 volt and a half batteries power the motor shield. Finally, what we'd like to do is not to have to flip these switches independently and have two different switches, but we'd like one switch that completes both circuits. And that's the kind of switch that we'll use. This is called a dual pole dual throw switch, and we indicate that by this dotted line which says that when we close one switch, or one circuit, we close the other as well. This is handy because we can use one switch to control both circuits. By the way, the power on the motor shield circuit is to power the motors that the motor shield controls. The actual electronics of the motor shield circuit 
is powered by the Arduino circuit, which is a little bit confusing. We don't show it here, but that's what's going on. Here's the 9 volt battery connector that will connect to the switch on the car to power the Arduino. We'll take the red wire from the 9 volt connector and we'll hook it to the center pole here. I'm going to bend the wire over to hold it in place while I try and solder it here. It's a little bit tight, but you can do it with a little bit of patience. So I'll put a little bit of solder on here and that takes care of the red wire. Now I'll cut a second red wire and I'll hook it to the other side of the switch. This is maybe a four inch piece of wire and I'll solder that one in place as well. You can see on the Arduino board there's a VIN connection and a ground connection. This is where we power the Arduino board. The black wire will go to the ground connection from the 9 volt lead and then the red wire on the other side of the switch will go to the VIN connection. But we're not going to connect them directly onto the Arduino board. Instead, we'll put the motor shield on here and we'll, con we'll make those connections onto the motor shield board instead. That way we can disconnect the Arduino board easily and we'll just have the power connections on the motor shield board. You can see here, here are the holes, the VIN and the ground holes. These correspond to the pins on the Arduino board. So if we solder our wires in these holes, the red wire in the VIN hole, and then the black wire in the ground hole here, then we'll actually be powering the electronics for both boards. So I'll flip the board over, I'll put the wires in there and flip them over, and then I'll solder the red and the black wires in place like I just showed you. Let's see, so there's one wire and now here goes the second wire. There we go. Now when I clip the boards together again, we'll see that the cables are able to power the uh, Arduino as well. We'll put the, put the board down here so I can take a look at it here. And now we'll put the battery, connect the battery to the 9 volt connector like that. Okay, now if we look at the LED on the Arduino board that shows that there's power, we can see the green LED here is on. And when I flip the switch off, we see that the LED goes off. If I flip it back on, it goes on again, showing that our switch and our connection works well. The last step is to hook the battery case up to the motor shield card. On this side, we'll place the negative lead, the black wire that we're going to solder on here. And then the other corner, we'll put the positive lead on. Here's a red wire that we've cut for the positive lead and we'll solder this in place. And then we'll run that to the opposite parallel switch, opposite pole on the parallel switch, so that we can remember control both circuits with one switch here. So there we've got it soldered in place. You may want to actually put some hot glue on some of these connections because they're a little bit fragile. If you just slather some hot glue over on them, that'll kind of keep the wires from breaking off. And then we cut another piece of red wire like we did for the other side of the switch. And now we can hook that red wire that we've soldered across the switch to the power connector on the motor shield. We can screw that in place like that. And then finally, we put the ground lead on the other corner of the battery case. This is a black wire that we've cut, maybe another four inches again. And we solder one end on the battery case and then we insert the other end into the power connector on the motor shield. So now you have power to both the electronics on your motor shield and your Arduino, and you have power to the motors that will be powered by the motor shield. And that brings us to the end of this video. Remember, if you want to follow along with these videos, you can get all the parts in a kit, if you'd like, from swarmus.com. Look forward to working with you on the next video where we will start to wire up some of the sensors and the motors.